amigos, hola amigas, Doreen here from Hoovalux. Welcome, bienvenido, grocery, good day, salam alaikum, welcome y'all. So this is the box that I have here. And as you can see, it's not a very heavy box, which is very good. Now it was Michael Davies from New South Wales who contacted me when he saw that I was in Australia. And he said, look, I've got a vacuum cleaner that you can, that you can have. Um, so all I had to do was pay for postage and it's arrived today, as, you've, as I've previously said. So we are going to do an unboxing. So this is my first Aussie unboxing. I've got my box cutters here. Taking off the wrapping. And this box looks like it will come off at the top. It's very well wrapped. Now I've got my dad, Neil, in the background watching as well with interest because he was also very interested in what was this machine it's very well wrapped okay we got it now right the lid's off let's just cut the solid tip off There we go. Now, ooh, I can see inside. First of all, I can see a handle and I can see a brown cable. And finally, we have this. Now it's still hidden away. It's not as heavy as I thought it was going to be. It's quite light, actually. So I have to take the tape off very carefully from this machine and the bubble wrap that's protecting it. Now, I had not seen one of these before. When I first saw the picture, I thought what it was, and then it was only when I saw after what it actually was. I'm just taking the tape off. Very carefully. There we go. Now I need to take the tape off from down here. Should be able to slide it out. There we go. Wow. That is very unusual. This is a National Asylum Power upright vacuum cleaner. I'm going to take my gloves off for this. Let's undo the covering on the handle. Wow, this is very exciting. This is a very nice machine. I thought it was a, um, a concept when I first saw it, but it's actually a national machine. Just to take off. There we go. There's a bit more tape stuck on the screw to hold it in. So that's quite good, I don't have to be hunting for the screw. And I can see the handle goes in the back here. And I can see there. Big, flat screwdriver. 
Wow. What a wonderfully looking machine. This is so unusual. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move you guys a little bit closer so you can see it in more detail. Okay, I've repositioned you so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we've got a power control button this low, medium, and high at the top. That could indicate uh, motor power speed. This. Ah, wow, that's where the bag goes in there. And I can see inside that it does. It comes with a cloth bag, as you can see there. Now, to save the vacuum, I'm not going to use the cloth bag. I'm going to use a HEPA flow bag that I brought over with me. You can see on the inside, it's in really good condition. Wow, this is so unusual. It's very American looking. So I'm gonna pop the HEPA black bag in there. I'm just going to just squidge it in a bit. Like so. I'm gonna pop the bag door on. And then you, that's in place. There is a bag indicator. It's almost like a, a, a gauge, like on a car. Let's have a look underneath. Here we have a beautiful metal brush roll with lovely, strong, thick bristles and also beta bars on it as well. Lovely, big, flat bottom plate on it. Around the back, we have the hose, which, ah yes, that does come out. Um, I guess there'd be an attachment to this so that you could use it as an extension hose. That fits inside there. And there's also a port there if there's a blockage, a blockage port. Carry handle here. Foot release pedal there. And we have got a National Vacuum Cleaner, MC663G, seven, 670 watts, uh, Matsushita Electrical, made in Japan. So this is a National, which is a Japanese machine, but it looks very much like a um, Hoover Concept. Very, very similar to Hoover Concept. You'll have to excuse my voice. So, let's plug it in. Let's have a look. There we go. Now, no idea how this switch is on. So I'm not sure if there's an on and off button. Oh, it's on the handle. All oh, right, okay, so there's the on and off button is actually on the handle. So that must be ooh, that motor, the bearings need some oiling, but that's not a problem at all. So you can control the speed of the motor by these buttons on the top. It's very, very 1970s looking. Um, and the on and off button here is on the handle. It's, I love this machine. This is so unusual. I have not seen one of these ever. Right, okay, let's get it on the floor and let's give it a quick go. Okay, so I've put down some dust on the floor as you can see flying around. <sighs> let's give it a go and see how it does picking it up.
now the bearings definitely do need uh, doing on that very much so um, let me just check the suction again <laughs> seem to be getting much suction coming from it. Let's have a look. All right. Right, so this actually, it, it is a sealed system because the suction comes from down here. So this is a sealed system. Let's have a look. So I didn't seem to be getting much suction from it, so I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I didn't catch the... Make sure it's all tucked in. I'm not getting much suction from it. Let me try it with its cloth bag that it came with. Let me try that. Getting amazing airflow from it, and I don't know why. I can see the motor down in there. What I will do, because it's getting too late now, is tomorrow. <laughs> a closer look at it and take a look at the port but I can see that the suction is to come through here but I'm not getting a lot of airflow through it so what I'll do I'll take a closer look at this tomorrow I just wanted to do the quick unboxing for this very minute um, but tomorrow I will take a closer look at it so I shall see you in a minute <laughs> Okay, so I am here out in the back paddock with Dad. Hello. Hello and this is a John Deere D105 Auto. What is it? Ride on mower. And on the back, you've got the attachment for the trailer, which is just over there that you can see. So 
that's quite a piece of land to take care of so you need a ride on mower for this so how old is this machine uh four or five years yeah. I guess. and what does it run on it runs on ordinary petrol just an ordinary petrol and what are these controls here for okay well to start it you Turn the key there, obviously. Yeah. It's got headlights, so if the oh, first yeah. key is headlights, you can do yeah. it at night. And the second one will start it. Okay. This one here is your speed of the motor. You pull it up and down, where it's got rabbit, is obviously fast, and tortoise is slow. Okay. Over here is the height All right, yes. of the... You want to itself. cut the grass. Yeah, I can right. see that, yeah. So you take it up and down to the height you want. Okay. That's like like a clutch, I suppose, in a way. Yeah. And the other pedal on the other side is the speed that you want to go. If you want to go faster, you push that down and increase the speed up here as well. So it has gears, does it? No, it doesn't. It just goes. So what's the clutch for? The clutch, when you change... Yeah, it does have gears. Sorry, you're right. It has... It's in neutral at the moment, as oh, you yeah. can see. If you go into forward, just go down and down. It's in forward gear. Um, and reverse is down and back to reverse gear. So you use the clutch then just to go back and forth? There's yes. only one gear, Real one way. Yes, that's okay. all you need it for. Um, and that's about it. Um, right, okay. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to hand the camera over to Crystal and she's going to film me having a go of it. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. Okay, Dad. Put the clutch in. Clutch on. All right. That's that. First one's locked. Second one. Yeah. Start it up, beauty. Wanna go forward? Yeah. Put it on the clutch. Yeah. Put it forward here. Where's the brake? There is no brake. Okay. Okay, we had a bit of a false start there, so okay, Dad's gonna get it going.
And there we go, we have gone around the paddock. We've gone around half of the paddock anyway, on this John Deere. Oh, that was exciting. You enjoyed that? I did enjoy that. That's awesome, you had right. fun. Let's get back into the garage. Okay, my little kookaburras, I hope you enjoyed that little video of me having a go at the tractor there on the back paddock. It's been a few days due to illness and then trying to get out and do some stuff. So literally this is the Sunday and we are leaving to go back to the UK in two days, unfortunately on Tuesday night. So I'm not gonna get time to um, do a full refurb on this video. Plus as well, um, I don't have all the tools and stuff necessary because I want to strip this down completely, down to the bare bones, and um, the motor is gonna have to be refurbed. Uh, it just doesn't have the power that it should do, so I'm gonna have to strip it and grease the bearings, and uh, all that video will come out when I get back into the UK, but I would just like to say a huge, huge thank you to Michael Davies for giving me this vacuum um it's it's a rare one it's an unusual one and i really really do love it and it's gonna come up like new um but i'm not gonna be able to do this until the new year unfortunately uh due to other videos and stuff that i have coming out so this will definitely be one of the ones coming out the videos will be out in the new year so I'll be sending messages to Michael and showing him the progress of it and it going back to the UK. And then we will do a full strip down, refurb, repair and house demo with it. And I absolutely can't wait. You will see this machine a number of times because it is a lovely, lovely machine. So I'm just gonna stick his cloth bag on there for now. I am going to close its lovely old door. There we go. And I've got the cord here. Now the cord, uh, there, sh there should be another um, cord hook here on the top, but unfortunately that's broken off, but it's not a problem because I will just um, put on something else which is quite similar to the brown one here on the bottom. So I'll be able to um, hook the cord around it. That won't be an issue, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Right, okay, so let me just move this out of the way. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be my last video in Australia with the vacuums. And there are a number of machines that I've been unable to do that Dad has bought. There is, well, I'll show you in a second. Let me just get this out of the way. Let me get some of the other stuff up onto the table and we will take a look at the other ones that you will see at some point in the future, but I'll just show you now. So the first one I didn't get a chance to refurb much was this over 638. Um, I just have run out of the time. It is a lovely example of a 638, but it badly, badly, badly needs refurbing on it. The handle on it is all rotted away. Um, but I haven't even switched it on. Now I did take the bag off and I did wash the bag, but it does need some repairs to it and some sewing done on the bottom. And also then I did clean up this as well, but I'll leave this with this until next time. And then I will refurb it next time I'm over, but at least those two parts are clean so unfortunately they're going to go by the wayside for now and these will get cleaned and refurbed next time we're over so let's take a look at the other machine i didn't get a chance to do so the other one we didn't get to look at was this ze62 electrolux um i have plugged it in and switched it on and it does work it just needs to be refurbed like the other one that I have there. So this has got a broken handle on it, unfortunately, but um, it's got some cord there on it. But it, it is possible to kind of like create a new cord for it. If I remove this off and put like, a, like another strap thing on it, I could sort of like get a, 
like a like a, a dog collar kind of thing and then try and recreate um, a new strap using that which would definitely look better than what the string is on the broken part but unfortunately this has seen better days but it does actually work so unfortunately that one's gonna have to wait uh, the other one I didn't get a chance to look at either was this uh, floor polisher. This is a VAC trick. This is the model FP22, 225 watts, serial number 14820. VAC trick electrical appliances limited, Finsbury SA. But again, I didn't get a chance to even switch this on. This also needs a full respray, but with a complete rub down, it's still got its brushes on the bottom, which are pretty good. With a full refurb and a respray, that could look amazing again. The bumper, very easy to come off. Just pull it off, clean it, rub down all the metal, put a new cable on it, and um, clean it up and respray it. And again, that would come up very good. The handle on the top is a bit decayed, but with a bit of soaking and a bit of cleaning, at least it would have, it'll have its patina, definitely. Um, but we, it's rusted very badly on the outside, but we could get that looking really good. So those are the machines that um, Dad had bought for me from eBay in Australia. Now there's another machine that I'll show you. Actually, I'll take you off the tripod and I'll show the other machines over there and we'll have a quick look at them. Uh, these are some of just the like the scrap machines that have been left here to be looked at uh, Some of them for the bin This one is a Volta Animal care bagless machine uh, Let's have a look underneath Let me just move the Stupid thing up the way So there we go T10 There's the model number 1600 watts made in China that's ended up in the bag of shame this other one then is a removing the dust what is this this isn't even branded by the looks of it let's have a look underneath okay another one made in China Maison 1800 watts with a telephone number. I think we'll bother with that one. And the final one that hasn't been looked at at all. Now this one, if I can get the hops out of it. Is this one. This looks to be a bagged machine by the look of it. Open it up. Yes. And the bag is full. And full of dust and broken and leaked. So it's possibly salvageable. You can't get the door shut on it. This one is a homemaker. 2000 watts max, made in China again. Um, cord and everything for it still works and with the proper bags it would be quite nice but for a cheap but at least it's a bagged machine but that would come up pretty nice I think after a refurb but again next time we'll do it next time so these are the hoses and all the attachments that is a turbo brush there so that would be very good on carpets and hard floor. This table brush, it's actually, it's just like the one that you find, um, like the um, fake, it's the fake um, pneumatic brush, except it's a bit battered, to say the least. Squeegee's still on there. It's definitely seen better days. That should work. Very good. So it'd be nice to get that refurbed up. So I'll tell Dad to keep that one. And I can refurb that because that would be very good. Try and get it, try and get the bagged one fixed with that turbo brush uh, for Mum to use because it'd be far better than the bagless one she's got. 
that piranha is dire, and that even that hoover that I refibbed is horrendous. So anyway, guys, so there we go, my guys. There are the machines that did get done, haven't got done, will be for future videos. This beast here, this is next door's Electrolux, and he couldn't get it to work. So let me get you back on the tripod because this is quite a beastie of an Electrolux. And let's take a look at this. Okay, so I've moved you directly over the bench so you can see that Electrolux. Let me just see if it's in the shot. There we go. So this belongs to next door. And I think he has grabbed it out of his shed because it is very dusty. First of all, let's take off this hose because it's, it's knackered anyway. So let's just get rid of it. Let me get... The other bag, and let's just dust it off. Okay, so the bag on that was a bit full, so what I did was just take out some of the stuff from the bag so that I could put it back in. Like. Is that the right one? Hang on a second.
right, okay, there's a little flappy thing. There we go. There we go. So, this machine, this is an Electrolux made in Australia. This is the Electric Power Control Electrolux 725. It has a power takeoff socket at the front for a powered hose. Now, the hose that it's come with here does not have the powered socket on it. It's a beast of a machine. I'm just looking for a rating sticker on it, which I can't find. It looks like it's been taken off at some point, unfortunately. So I have absolutely no idea what uh, power this machine has. It does have here on the top, it has a max power button boost, variable power there. On the side, that's where the cable comes out. And when you release, it lifts up the flap and I can see the cord rewind in there. So let's pull out the cord. Plug this in gingerly. There we go. Let's switch it on. No. Nope. Absolutely nothing. So if I'm not getting nothing at all like I'm not, that could possibly, let me just unplug it very quickly, um, be something to do with the plug, the wires themselves coming out. I have no idea, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to have got this cleaned up. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get any further with this one, but this is a, another one. This was next doors. So hopefully if it's still here, I'll get another chance to take a look at it but unfortunately without my workshop it's a bit hard to to, to refill these without being able to take them apart completely so no, i'll do that again okay let me get the cable back in this there we go my little kookaburras that is the end of the australian adventure i'm afraid here and me with harry the huntsman has been keeping me company during all of my vacuum get-alongs and clean-ups and things that I've been doing here in the garage. I'd like to say a big, big thank you to all of you. I hope you've enjoyed this series. It has been fantastic uh, doing this in Australia. Dad has made such an incredible effort with doing this temporary seat, uh, set for me. It is wonderful and I can't thank him enough from the bottom of my heart for doing all of this. It is absolutely wonderful. Again, excuse the chest and the voice. It's a bit uh, still getting over um, a chest infection that I picked up on the plane, which was a cold and then turned into a chest infection for myself and then also for puppy lux turned into sinusitis. But we are finally getting over it and we're going home in two days, so that's wonderful. But never mind, being here and being with the family is the most important thing. Anything else is just secondary. So there we go. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe below. Hit that bell notification to get um, informed of when I got a new video coming up. Stacks of stuff in the back catalog, everything you can think of. Please take a look through it there. It might be something that you're interested in. And there's a heap more videos coming up as well in the future. So on behalf of Australia, Australians, New Zealand, Tasmania, all of this thank you so much for everything and i'll see you all in the next episode back in blighty bye y'all